You know how we always joke, Kevin, we say that stars are just like us? Yeah. Travis Barker had his entire morning turned upside down by what? About a six-year-old, Travis? Who was, who was calling the shots at your house this morning? Oh, my gosh. My daughter. Yeah. She's the boss. And how old is she? She's eight. Yeah. And she she wanted nothing to do with getting up and getting out of bed on time and getting to school so that you could make this interview. Yeah, we had a crazy weekend. <laughs> uh, yeah, you had a little birthday party going on this weekend. It looked like fun. Yeah, my son had like a performance. He plays with a DJ, DJ drummer duo, rapper duo. Um, so we did that, and then yeah, unfortunately there was like a funeral this weekend. It was a it was an action packed weekend. That circle of like life, it. man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah re- re- truly. <laughs> Well, we, uh, you know, we always say yes when we get the word, uh, when the, you know, the Travis Barker bat signal goes up in the sky that you've got something you want to talk about. So we heard that you wanted to come into Carrick. You got a bunch of cool stuff going on. So where do you want to start, man? Yeah. I mean, I wanted to come by and, and personally give you guys our Misfits collab. I've loved that band since I was like a kid, you know, um, they're, they're just amazing. So we did this official collab with Jerry Only from the Misfits and, uh, and it's just been an, an honor, you know, it's rooted in and punk rock and and like our history my history so yeah it's a really really fun collab you tell me about your history with the the misfits like what's your earliest memory of that band my earliest memory was hearing metallica cover last caress and i was Mm -hmm. so obsessed with the lyrics and it was so i don't even know if i could say them on the air right (laughs) but (laughs) but hearing them say that it was like oh man i was like in seventh or eighth grade and you couldn't help but want to play it because it was so you know they were saying the gnarliest things ever it was right. you know so bad to repeat the lyrics and then and then you know i graduated on to buying my own misfits albums and 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 loving like hybrid moments and uh we are 138 and and you know skulls everything you know everything yeah. that the misfits has to offer um and then i was always you know i know it's divided now but i was always a huge glenn danzig fan a doyle fan jerry only fan so um i just I've always loved the band, you know, so this was a really, really special collab. We've done a lot of special collabs lately, you know, leading into the, the, the bike. Yeah, the bike we do with PK Ripper. It was like SE Bikes has been around for like 30 years. I grew up racing BMX when I was a kid and loving BMX. So for that to come full circle 30 years later and we do a collab with Famous. How been... much did you uh, uh, race when you were a kid? Um, what was you your know, worst injury? I did it that until... That can't go well. Yeah, I did it until my friend Bobby Gourlay like fell off a, uh, you know, there was a quarter pipe in our neighborhood. Everyone rode, and I saw him. He got all the way up to the top. He like stalled on his back tire. Yeah. And then he hit face first and went into convulsions. Oh. It was terrible, and I oh. witnessed the whole thing. So <laughs> from then, I, I stuck to my skateboarding roots. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, uh, yeah, I continued skateboarding. You know, it's just as gnarly skateboarding, man. You could get really, really messed up, but um. But yeah, you know, both skateboarding and BMX really shaped me, you know, from everything from the music I listen to to ev- everything, really. It's interesting how much you're going back to things that were big influences on you as a kid and they're still they still seem to be, affect you as much. You, they you still seem to have that powerful connection with those things that you were in love with when you were, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10 years old. Yeah, I mean, when I put on Last Caress by the Misfits t- to this day still you know i mean you want to like scream as loud as you can in the car and and i still ride my bike you know i i uh i ride all around town unless i got to pick up my kids or i got to take my drums to the studio or something i'm i'm on my bike (laughs) it's just nice you know yeah well um well we have two two conversations going on at the same time let me uh finish up the misfits one by asking so you're a huge fan of theirs then once you become a musician and are in a punk rock band did you ever have occasion to to open for them or get to know them become friends with them you know earlier this year in canada uh blink was playing a set but i was playing drums with h2o on the side stage and jerry only and the misfits were playing you know a couple couple slots after us right so i went over there and you know Jerry's super, super nice. You know, he came over and gave my kids misfit masks, and like, he's just. Were you geeking the, out on the him? best? Yeah. <laughs> well, it all, you know, it always pays off. You like someone forever, and then you meet them, and they're actually stand up solid guy. It was just. Oh, it was, that doesn't you know, happen a lot, it seems. It, you know, it really seems like you build them up so high in your mind, and then you meet them, and say, oh, I wish I hadn't met them. Yeah, that yeah. Happens. There's a lot of people I stay away from. I don't want to meet that I like a lot because you're afraid <laughs> yeah. that they won't live up to what you think of them. Yeah, 
I mean, but you know, that wasn't the case with him. He was just so nice. So cool. So this collaboration, this is official, official Misfits merchandise that Stars and Straps are putting out. Yeah, yeah. It's available at uh, at famousstarsandstraps.com right now. So it's available right now, but then our full length, like kind of like we have a whole capsule of stuff with the Misfits that come out next fall. But we, we got this out for Halloween. I find it hard to believe the Famous Stars and Straps is at its 15th year anniversary. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. It's been a long time, yeah. But, but long. I learned quite a bit. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, well, you know, there's a lot of like, a lot of cats in the clothing industry. It was either, you know, they started, it was like a startup with their dad's money and they were all, you know, millionaires. Like, my dad didn't have nothing, you know. He's like lower middle class, blue collar worker. You right. Know, awesome Vietnam vet, you know. I wasn't an attorney. I didn't go to fashion school. It was just... So for me, wait, you're like, not an attorney, Travis Barker. I am not an attorney, <laughs> and I didn't go to college. <laughs> um, it was just the passion for wanting to do something, you know. Just like when I started music, you know, I wasn't, you know, born with drumsticks in my hand. My dad wasn't a famous drummer. It was like I just, I loved these things and I was passionate about them, and I practiced all the time. Or I just like, you know, I would stay up. I mean, it wasn't healthy, but I would stay up on Ritalin and other things when I started my clothing company. Like, you know, like just tweaking out trying to you know figure everything out i made tons of mistakes over the last 15 years made a lot of great decisions if you were going to start it again today would it would it be completely different i would do it exactly the same you would yeah <laughs> okay so you're not learning from any yeah. mistakes well no no i did learn from mistakes but i think they're like it's like growth you know yeah. it's like growth you just gotta it's you gotta no go one teaches it. you that yeah you gotta you gotta go through it so Travis, um, a lot of the collaborations, you know, on paper make sense. Like, I can see why you're working with the Misfits. I can see the SE Bikes, for instance, and some of the, gra- the, you know, the graffiti and tattoo artists that you've done collabs with in the past, I can see. Family Guy is the one that, ought to, one of these things is not like the others. Like, I don't see how to start the straps and Family Guy work. It does work when I look at the artwork, but how did something like that even happen? You know, it came across in all of our artists. Like, I have great artists, like a great art team. And it was like, it was like a really, and big fans of Family Guy, you know? So when it came through, they already had, like, ideas. There was already, I mean... When it was presented to me, there there was already art to go along with it. They were so excited about it. That's pretty so, cool. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. And, you know, you always got to throw a left, you know? Like, even when you make an album, you can't, like, everything on the album can't be predictable. It's got to right. be something where, like, That's why you let Tom your... sing some of the songs. Exactly. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, like, it, it's cool to throw everyone a left. And, and Family Guy was just cool. And, and our spin on it, you know, we, we definitely still kept it us. Oh, the artwork is so cool. So. Thank you. Oh, you put them yeah. in the hood. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, Family Guy went um, to the hood. So you can uh, you can find all of the stuff that we're talking about, the Misfits, the Family Guy, the SE Bikes. You can find it at FamousSAS.com, Famous Stars and Straps, if you don't remember, and it'll automatically go to FamousSAS.com. Um, do you have like a million collaborations that you want to do? Like you're, you, you're, you've planned them out in advance, or is it just whatever your next idea is, you'll pursue that? Yeah, we have. We still have a couple more this year. Like we did a we did a switchblade this year too, like a knife, which was really cool. But it was like a survival knife with like glass breaker. What's um, happening? Seatbelt cutter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good. when we had a conversation about having you in, and Dave, the King of Mexico, started telling us all of these different collaborations that you were doing, and it, it's impossible to guess what's next. Like, yeah. why a knife? How did well, that come about? That was another thing. But, I mean, I didn't want it to be like a weapon. But it is. I mean, I carry it in my car, like glass breakers, seatbelt cutter, and blade. But it has, like, uh, it's uh, it's hydro-dipped. So it's like the blade is actually printed on. You know, okay. it's not just a blade. And it's like our, it's the same camo that's on our SE bike. So everything kind of goes together, you know? But what made you say, I'm going to do a knife why not <laughs> come on kevin why not <laughs> no, it was just cool like who makes a knife you know um so that was a bit i mean we sold out of them instantly I'm sure. you know the first you know first day then we did uh well that's what america needs is more yeah. kids with knives on the street <laughs> right? travis thank you for that <laughs> um we, we're doing one with Pusshead, who did the og like metallica art misfits art who's like one of, he did the art for my my give the drum or some album mm-hmm. um we did one with Luke Westman, who's a really great tattoo artist, uh, Chewy Quintanar. So there's like some that are predictable, you know, like tattoo community, but, you know, they just keep coming. Um, let's talk about uh, music for a little bit. This is uh, Travis Barker in studio with us here on The Kevin and Bean Show, talking about, among other things, the famous Stars and Traps 15th anniversary and all the great new collaborations they're doing. You were playing at Staples Center this week with Demi Lovato? 
Yeah, I played. It was a it was a weird week. You know, I started off with Demi Lovato at Staples, and then ended with Steve Aoki and Waka Flocka at Kimmel. Okay, kind of cool. how? I feel like that's a normal <laughs> week for you, though. <laughs> I you like know? those weeks. Yeah, those weeks are always so interesting. Yeah, because it's so weird. And how do you get hooked up with Demi Lovato and all of that? Yeah, how does that she's happen? A, you know, she's a sweetheart, man. We've been. Uh, she actually something cool about her. She's a huge Transplants fan. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, like that was our first thing. She's like, you know, I have a shirt from the first album you guys signed for me. You know, when I met her one time through my kids because wow. they're big fans. But. uh yeah, so I was, you know, I was talking to her, and she's like, "You coming to my show tomorrow?" I said, "Yeah, I think I'm bringing the kids." And then maybe like three hours later, it was midnight. She's like, "Would you play with me?" <laughs> and I was like, "Sure," you know. So she sent me the music, and uh, you know, a couple hours later, we were on stage rocking together. And she's a drummer. What? Yeah, she plays drums. She's really oh, talented, man. She plays because you know, I'd, I'm, you know, my kids grew up on it more than I did, you know. But she, she plays guitar, piano, sings, and plays drums. So, so is awesome. there any kind of music you don't like, Travis? <sighs> not really. I or are you one of those people who thinks that. that there's there's good in every genre? Like if there were a country artist that wanted to play with you and you dug them, you would do it, right? Yeah, like outlaw rebel country. I love. Mm-hmm. You know, I had you know that that came up a couple years back, like when um, they asked me to do the country music awards, and I was like, oh, of course I would. You know, like I grew up on Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash and Buck Owens, so it was a tribute to Buck Owens who I had grown up on, who passed away. So when they asked me to do that, it was like, that was another full circle moment. It was a show I could really invite my pops to, and I knew he would enjoy it. Um, so yeah, there's always cool you things like that. You have the know? weirdest life. <laughs> you yeah. really do. Those things keep it interesting. You know, the, the <laughs> month that I've been home from Europe has been interesting. I got off the boat, and they, they asked me to go do uh, America's Got Talent with this acrobat crew. And the next morning, I'm I'm in I'm in America's Got Talent, Come and there's on. kids flying over my drum set doing like backflips and stuff. So, you know, I I never complain, man. I love 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 what I do. So. You sure do. Uh, let me ask you this: uh, if I can uh, phrase this question uh, properly, is there a, a great difference in style when you're playing on a country song versus when you're playing on a, a punk rock song or a jazz song or anything else? I mean, because uh, there are people who are experts in that genre of music. Are you able to pretty much fake it so you can play in any style? Well, I grew up playing everything, but like, for example, that gig, I learned the exact everything Buck Owens' drummer did. Oh, is that right? And I showed up there, because I knew it was sensitive too, like Buck Owens had just passed, and I just, I really wanted to nail it. I wanted to play exactly what was there. And the guy's like, hey man, there was a lot of mistakes on that record. You're playing them. So... Don't play his drum parts. I want you to play your drum parts. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, he's like, you know, there was so certain you, things did, we wanted to, him to do different. So, And then I got complete freedom. Did but, it occur to you that they were mistakes when you were learning it? Or you just like, I wouldn't have made that choice. Nah, I was just, Not at all. I was just you know, I, I thought some things were a little weird or whatever. But I was like, I want to do it just like he did. Because if everyone there is going to be, you know, playing that song. I'm gonna, and that's you know, what they'd expect. That's yeah. fascinating. And it was crazy. During that, out of, out of all the... Out of all the performances I've done, all the rappers I've worked with, it was probably the most gangster event that happened when I was playing with them. We were, like, rehearsing. And, you know, there's a lot of big country artists like Dwight Yoakam, Brad Paisley, Buck Owens' son. And we're learning the songs. We're going through it. And one of them turns to the other and he goes, Hey, man, you can't be messing up. We, we got to be on because we have enemies out there tonight. So everyone's got to be playing. Yeah. Everyone's got to be a 10. Everyone's got to know what we're doing, the arrangement, and we've got to kill it. We have enemies in the crowd. Nobody mess up. <laughs> what does like, that mean? Whoa. What does that mean? It means like, you know, I mean, old country, you know, outlaw Is the North country, still fighting the like, South? What's happening? Yeah, basically. <laughs> you know, they had artists they didn't get That's down with so in the crowd, and he was like, nobody better, you know. Really? F up. <laughs> wow! So it was pretty gangster. That? I was like, "Wow, this is <laughs> this is awesome." You know, these guys really care about it. Uh, listen, we're almost out of time, unfortunately, Travis. And we—I feel like we could we could talk to you for two hours straight because you have so many great things going on. But I, I have to ask, and I know you'll be back in before it comes out. But you're more than halfway through writing your autobiography now. My memoir is almost done. I actually last Friday, I it, it basically went to the editors now. Oh, no kidding. So, yeah, wow. they'll, they'll, you know, give me feedback like, hey, you know, give me more of this or less of this. But it's, you know, every chapter's finished. And then I have like a discography where I talk about everyone I've played with and 
That's going to be amazing. Where... Is this something you have wanted to do for a long time, or was this an idea that they pitched you and sort of talked you into? Because you're a fairly private person when it comes to a lot of aspects of your life. Yeah, I mean, right after my, right after the accident, you know, I got pitched a bunch of stuff like go on Oprah, go do this, and I, man, I didn't have the, I wasn't, I wasn't solid enough to do any of that. Right. I would have broke down. Your heart been, wasn't in it. I'd have been bawling, yeah. not even be able to speak the whole time. Um, so after time went on. Um, between that and then I had like a cancer scare, I was like, man, I could kind of go at any moment. Um, so maybe I will take the offers to write a book because it'd be kind of cool to get it out in case something does happen to me. You Do know? you have a really great memory or did you have to go back because you've done so many weird one-off and strange things? You find yourself in weird situations. Did you have to go back and talk to people? And Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. I mean... For one, I mean, it's therapeutic. Once you start talking about it, you'll start reading over it and go, oh, yeah, and this happened and this happened. But there's a lot of interviews in my book. Like Skinhead Rob is very popular in my book. Um, Mark Hoppus is in the book. Um, like close friends. So it's not just, you know how sometimes you read a memoir and you're like, man, I don't know if that happened. Like right. you're just saying that, whatever. Like I have... I have all the witnesses, all of Look, everyone doubts. to back it up. So it's it's pretty interesting. Nobody a, doubts your stories. Because they're all true. <laughs> there's some. Yeah, that's there's what's some, insane about you. Yeah, you know, I talk about getting too high. When I invited, uh, we all were supposed to go watch Drumline, and I got too high, and I didn't make it to the movie theater. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of my buddies brings that up. Yeah, it's pretty funny. But yeah, there's. He's a lot talking of, about me and Dave the cool King of Mexico <laughs> because we were mocking Drumline, I think, and Travis was yeah. like, "Look, not until you see it." Yeah. Right. And we went over there, and we were two and a half hours later than we thought, but yeah, we got there. I was too high to even come to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's some good, you know, there's a lot of, you know, like I said, like you said, I'm not, you know, I've always been the quiet guy in Blink. I'm not, right. you know, busting out, you know, penis jokes or whatever. But the memoir, I hope, is like a crash course for a lot of people. When um, do you think that'll come out? It'll come out in March. March. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. Can we I have can't you back wait, in Travis. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to be in. All right. Well, sadly, we have to uh, leave it there, uh, Travis. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to invite people to go to uh, famousstartsandstraps.com and catch up on all the great collaborations. And just for, for 45 seconds before we say goodbye, we're going to put a picture of this bike up at krock.com so that people can go. They can hear this interview again. Tell me about this bike because we're going to give this one away. We're going to give away the first one. Yeah, this is a limited edition SE uh, Big Ripper. So like your normal BMX bikes are 24-inch. This is a 29-inch. Made for so, adults. Yeah, it's a big boy, um, and it's custom, you know, limited. It's all camo. It's all got, like, custom engraving, uh, embossing, uh, thick, slick tires. It's it's crazy. It's the best. <laughs> it's like my dream BMX. It's like my BMX bike I dreamed of, like, as a kid on steroids. So, yeah, man, whoever wow. wins it, uh, I hope they enjoy it. What's it worth, Travis? I think they retail for, like, 900 bucks. Wow. Like, yeah, I know. I. Every time I write it, someone's like, yo, how much is that? I go, 900 bucks. <laughs> people get a sad face. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, it's amazing. I mean, they're, they're the best bike company. You know, PK Ripper is is, uh, is amazing. Lightning, actually, from K-Rock, mm -hmm. originally hooked me and the SE bike family up together. So shout out to Oh, Lightning. that's great. Yeah. Well, give us give us a little bit of time, kids, and we'll get all this information up at the website, and there'll be a way for you to, you know, to enter to win, and we'll uh, actually give that away this week because that is a very, very cool item. Travis, you know how much we love you, sincerely, from the uh, bottom of our hearts. Uh, I love really... you guys too, man. 